Precious friends, I would like to explore together with you a concept that came to my attention recently. Uh, every time we say stress, um, it, it appears to be something negative to us, but it's not always the case. Stress uh, has a positive side, a very important one in supporting life and faith and understanding and working on our work and everything. Stress has a positive side and, of course, a negative one. But beyond all these, stress has a godly side. So today, by the grace of God, we will talk about godly stress. Godly stress is that form of stress where a man struggles and fights to understand and thinks and uh, uh, is warring against uh, in his own mind uh, for a better understanding of truth and of the truth about God in a special way. Godly stress. But why does God uh, allow this godly stress in our lives? It is for a blessed reason. Number one, if we would receive everything ready-made, we would become something <laughs> like ready-made. We would lose our personality and uh, our calling on earth. We have to fight, we have to struggle, we have to invest, we have to risk. We have to work hard in our mind to understand the truth. The truth is not its surface. It's not spread on roads or on, on trenches on the right side or left side of the road. It is deep, as the book of Job says, like in a mine for precious stones. So uh, why so deep? Because truth should be at hand. If, it should, if truth would be at hand, you would not be appreciated. People would not appreciated. What if gold would be everywhere? Would have, wouldn't have any kind of price at all. But the fact that it's so rare and so deep um, cause, uh, causes us to appreciate the value. The same with truth. So we go together in John chapter 10 and verse 24. People protested against Jesus. They encircled him almost like uh, forcing him to give an answer. And they encircled him, and they addressed this question. How long are you going to keep us in suspense? How long are you going to keep our, our souls hanging? How long are you going to keep us under tension, under stress? How long? Because you can eliminate this stress on spot by one single word. Are you the son of God or not? Well, Jesus didn't eliminate this stress because this was a godly stress. They needed it so very much. Man doesn't learn anything from God or from parents or from anybody else, only from himself. Only those teachings and those truths that are adopted by our own mind and conscience, those become part of our lives. Otherwise, people or God or anybody can say whatever they want. If the person does not adopt the truth, the truth remains exterior. It's, it has nothing in common. So here, instead of uh, offering a shortcut or a, a solution for this problem, Jesus extends the state of stress. And that was a terrible stress because they said, we are in suspense. It's not about uh, a kind of bread. What kind of bread do I take? If I take a bad one, uh, next time I know what I buy or, or fruits or anything else. It's about uh, life and death. It's about God. And we are in suspense concerning you. How long are you going to keep us in suspense under this kind of stress? Jesus said, uh, you don't need this kind of stress. It could be eliminated, but not by me or by God. Uh, it can be eliminated by yourself through accepting the truth, the evidence. It's here, but you do not accept it. And in verse um, 25, Jesus replied, I have already told you. Tell us, tell us, tell us. No, I have already told you, and you do not believe 
me. That's the problem. That's the cause of our stress. But when you strive to understand God, and when you try, uh, strive and, uh, and uh, struggle to understand the truth, that's a godly stress. Uh, yes, I know it's uncomfortable. You would like a simple solution, black and white. Uh, it's better to have directions from somebody or uh, even better for somebody to accompany you to the destination. It is not easy to have a faith uh, or, or to believe in a, an unseen God. It is way better to see the golden calf. Uh, you see it, you follow it. I need a set of rules. Let me know what I am supposed to do, the job description and stuff like that. God doesn't work this way. He wants you to discover the truth because this is the only way you will adopt the truth if you discover it yourself. If you, if you wait for a ready-made solution, that would not help to your progress, to your development in any area. That would block your development. So that's why Jesus didn't give a ready-made answer, but said, continue thinking, continue exploring, uh, continue being under this godly stress of understanding and of believing the works you see. They are very simple, black and white, if you believe them. If you do not believe them, they become very, very complicated. But why Why don't we believe, they said? What's, what's the matter that, that we do not believe? And then uh, it, it's a very striking answer. And... Uh, Jesus said, "You do not, verse twenty-five. You do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you." Oh, now I understand. So uh, he says, "My sheep hears my voice, understand it, and they follow. They do not follow a stranger because they do not know him." Beloved, in the natural world. You need to know somebody in order to love somebody, or you need to 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 uh, obey somebody naturally. You need to obey, to uh, execute, and you become. Yeah, you, if you execute the orders, you become a good military officer and stuff like that. You are not made officer before obeying the orders, learning, going in school and stuff like that. At the end of the school, you become an officer because you obeyed, because you executed the orders, and you proved yourself to be a trusted, good military. You become an officer. With God, it's just the opposite. You have to become an officer first in order to obey. If you do not become an officer, if you do not become one of the, a, a good tree, as Jesus said, you cannot bear good fruits. First makes the tree is just the opposite. That was the problem. They didn't want to commit themselves to the faith in Christ before um, searching or accepting evidences or uh, different aspects of the life of Christ. And based on those evidences, they would believe the evidence is not him. He said, I am the son of God, but they, they wouldn't believe that. Jesus said, oh, okay, if you don't believe me, no problems. Just believe the evidence. They didn't believe the evidence either. Why? Because they didn't commit themselves to him. In order to understand the word of God, in order to, uh, to have access to light, you have to become first. You do not become a son of God by doing something in the religious field or spiritual or stuff like that. You make the tree. And uh, you know that when the tree is planted, he has no fruits, but he will bear fruits. That's the difference. You do not, uh, a tree, a fruit tree, is not a fruit tree because of the fruits. The fruits are there because this is a fruit tree. This is the work of creation. Create in me a clean heart, said David, and then life would follow. That's not easy. That's stressful. To commit yourself to him by faith and to love him in order to understand, to know him. That's the uh, against our nature, but beloved, do not be intimidated at, at all. This is the way of God. Uh, follow him in faith 
uh, commit yourself to him and you will understand. Uh, Jesus said in the, uh, in the Gospel of John, if somebody wants to obey, the, so you become obedient by faith. You didn't do anything, but by faith you become obedient. Yes, I commit myself to obedience for, for the Word of God. If you do that, you will understand, says Jesus. But if you just come with doubt there, then you will never have access to truth. You'll always be in suspense in this kind of stress. And this is a godly stress when you uh, uh, open your heart for uh, the truth of God and take him by his word and um, you become before uh, or you become the son of God by faith. That's, that's, that eliminate and, and make the stress bear fruits. Or in the end, the, the stress, the doubts concerning God, they will multiply and they will overwhelm our souls. Uh, precious friends, um, trust him and commit yourself to him, and then you will see the fruits in your life. And uh, love God with all your heart and mind and soul, and then you will understand and know him. That's the law, unseen law of God, but it was proved in so many millions of lives in history that they, it bears fruits for eternity. Gracious Father, bless my young friends and help us to understand this law of faith and help us to trust you, Lord, and to become what you pronounce us to be before or uh, 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 of any, in advance of anything happening in our lives and then the fruits will come. Help us to trust your word. Help us to love you with all our hearts and mind and souls in order to know you. Help us to become sons of God in order to obey you. We submit and commit ourselves to you and to your word by faith in Christ Jesus' name. Amen.